trifft sozusagen vergessen. Mal sehen, wie er das auf die Reihe bekommt. David Pellet. Nimmt es auf mit dem Video Weltmeister aus dem Jahre 2014. Er spielte damals eine unglaublich gute erste PDC-Saison, hat seit anderthalb Jahren ein paar Problemchen, auch in 2017, zumindest bislang. Er steht auf Weltranglistenplatz Nummer 22. Die Rede ist von The Bullet, Stephen Bunting. Of Stephen Bunting and David Parrott encouraging the two and a half thousand strong crowd to make more noise for them. Friends awfully okay, but there are no friends on it as we are about to find out. We've rattled through this afternoon session here in Hildesheim. German Darts Championship European Tour event won in 2017. This is the penultimate match of the Saturday afternoon action. It's Bunting against Pallet. I'm Chris Murphy and joining me is Rob Malarkey for what's going to be another 6-1 either way, <laughs> surely? Surely. Um, well, two players who know each other inside out, know each other very well, as you say, off the hockey as well, good friends, and maybe that familiarity will breed a, a, a much elongated match, a, a longer match here today. I'll be surprised if it is 6-1. Pallets came through yesterday by that scoreline against Veo Vinica, the uh, Finnish player. Stephen Bunting, though, on his day, a very, very capable player indeed. His uh, performance in Europe last year was fairly noteworthy. He had a semi-final appearance at the European Darts Open where he lost to Peter Wright. Didn't qualify for just the one event. He had to come through qualifying for the first four, but then he was there by right as one of the top seeds, and he's here once again, this time as the number 15. Difficult one to call this. David Palitzu has had his moments on the European tour stage. First leg, David, and throw first. Game on! Semi-finalist in a European tour event a couple of years ago. But, was, um, yeah, I'll be surprised if it's 6-1 either way. Neither player's really coming in 16. in fantastic form, are they? So no. it is difficult to call, you know, very much similar form lines. Obviously, Bunting, the higher ranked of the pair, he's 22nd in the PDC Order of Merit, but he's starting One man of in decent style here. This is against the darts, but he's in a, a precarious position, really, in terms of qualifying for these tournaments, because he's 17th on the Proto Order of Merit. Now, the only player currently above him that's likely 56. to opt out is Gary Anderson, and he could well be out of the top 16 by the end of this tournament anyway. Yeah. Christo Reyes just winning. He's leapfrogged Stephen Bunting now, so he'd be hoping to jump back in front of him with victory 58. here. And, of course, should he not win this match, he will not receive the money on his ranking. So a very, very precarious position and one that could see him having to go back to qualifiers. So plenty at stake, as well as the obvious incentive of a place in the third round tomorrow, where the winner will face either Peter Wright or Christian Kist, by the way. 95. David Pallet didn't qualify for this tournament last... Oh, sorry, he lost to Mensil Sulovic last time in the third round. In uh, October of 2016. There was a last tournament of last year, wasn't it? And the first of this one. So uh, Alan Norris will have to win it again if he wants to keep his crown for a full year. One yeah, I was going to say he didn't qualify two years ago uh, for this tournament, but he did make it last year. As for Bunting, exited at this stage, the second round at the hands of Steve West. Steve West had a very productive time of it during the autumn months last year. Anyway, Bunting on uh, 108 here. 68. Just top. Yeah, that was unlucky. Just uh, seemed to move the wire. I think Pallet having to sort of bat off a fly or something before I he just threw that. what he was doing there. I... Has it put he him scored. off? The yeah. dart made it difficult as well. Stay the way that land with that sort of inverted angle make it harder at that side of the board. Game show and, the first uh, Bunting, Still finishing Pallet there for his missed Second leg, Stephen, double 16. First. Game on. 
Yeah, just seemed to knock Palace off his stride slightly, that, but uh, needs to put that one behind him. Well, so far we've seen four six ones out of the six matches we've had. Has Bunting, one there's in the first match and the fifth one. Yeah, there went to Gerwin Price, Yella Klaassen, Kim Hybrex, who we've just seen, and, and the biggest surprise of the lot, Jan Decker defeating Michael Smith, 6 1, the first seed to fall. Indeed, by a very, very hefty scoreline. Uh, Bunting standing way over on the right hand side of the hockey. One. Uh, new shirt for Stephen Bunting this year, looks like a new haircut as well. Will it bring about a change in fortune for him? So far, so good. He has the break of throw and he's got a cushion one. here as well. Yeah, kicked off the leg with a max. He's certainly found his range on the treble 20. One. He's like the opposite of Andrew Gilding, who stands way over on the left hand side of the hockey. He's the polar opposite of that. I remember Rod Harrington questioning the wisdom of that because obviously you've got to throw from an angle and you're throwing a further distance as well. Well, especially when it gets to the outer ring because you're throwing a much further distance of double 16 than you are for, say, double 10 or double 18. 89. Good set up that using the ball, the bullets. All Pallet can do now is hit and hope. He needs another treble to leave any kind of finish. Does that? We'd expect Bunting to double his advantage here. But just to make your point, you saw him move closer to it then. He stepped into the middle of the hockey for the second dart. And it didn't knock him off his stride. He's found himself in a 2 0 lead hit. You see the camera angle there, how far he does stand across, but you know, it's, it's what he's always done. So, you know, he's been a successful player, former Lakeside champion. Can't see him changing that. Just the one title last year, it was at the second players championship events in uh, March of 2016. He beat Peter Wright, Robert Thornton, Lewis and Van Gerwen. It's not a bad list of names, is it? To not a bad at all. Defeat on the way to a title. David Pallet hasn't reached the quarterfinals of anything for uh, over a year since the very first Pro Tour event of 2016. Wow. First, well, we knew a lot about him before he played Kim Hybrex at the World Championship 55. in December of 2015, the 2016 World Championship. He beat uh, Hybrex 3 2 to reach the last 32, then had that amazing game with Mensor Sulovic. Wow, right up, folks. Picked up 15 grand for that run at Ali Pali, but since then, prize money has been pretty hard to come by for him. Just uh, a little under £12,000 over the course of the rest of last year. 42. David requires 61. Game shot on the third well, that's better from they David Pallet, 61 All out to halve the deficit. First. Yeah, that game he mentioned on. against Mensal Sulevich. Both players missed the double for the perfect leg in that mm. one. We will see Sulevich later on against Mervyn King. Mouth-watering encounter. Yeah. One. Mervyn's just arrived, by the way. He's late, isn't he? Usually arrives about... Yeah. 36 hours before. 91. He would have been practicing in the hotel this morning, I'm sure. Mervyn King, the uh, biggest practicer. One, One more game to go in the afternoon session. That's the defending champion, Alan Norris, against Richie Corner. And then we've got eight more matches this evening as the field is whittled down to the final 16. The tournament will be played One. out. And the winner crowned tomorrow, £25,000 to the champion in each of these European Tour events. Yeah, usual marathon tomorrow if you want to go all the way to lifting the trophy. Four One matches you have to play. Third round in the afternoon session and then the evening session of quarterfinal, semi-final and final. Bunting in the mood once again here. One. The pallet needed that last start in treble to leave a 170, so Bullet's going to have Bunting, Bullet. Well, he's going to take it out. One and five. 
misfired with the last dart, but uh, he'll return for the double eight. Yeah, we'll just see where he stands for the double eight as well on that far side of the board. 16. Stating the requires 16. No. Two good markers, but so further away with these third dart. Hard to call because when he misses it, you can say, "Oh, he stands a long way across." But you know they were pretty close, weren't they? Now then, is Pallet going to punish? Seventy-eight. The last dart landed in the back of the one that was already in the board, so no points for that one. The old Robin Hood shot. Now he'll get this one because it's closer. Of course he will. That's more like it, just a nice solid start for David Pallet. One up, red up, forty. Likewise from Stephen Bunting. Yeah, already looking like an important leg. Four one and throwing next One would be a, a very handsome advantage for the Merseyside man. Third max. Stephen Bunting, former Premier League player himself, of course. 64. Yeah, we had that mini discussion earlier about the Premier League coming too soon for some players. That may have been the case for Bunting as well, but. One David Yeah, well, he was bold enough to ride into the PDC following his Lakeside glory, and he was given the. Uh, the rewards for that, he was he made an immediate impact, won a pro to have in a couple of events, didn't he? 93. Stephen to require 81. 12 for ball. Well, it's only mm. showing one on the dartboard, the two's gone missing from the 12, so... Is that a bit off-putting for Bunting? Stephen requires 64. Maybe it was. Single for double. To get himself out of trouble. 32. Furious with himself there, David Pallet. Bunting ready to pounce here. Chasing round the board, back up to five, and in the end he gets the job done. And he does find himself forward up and he's throwing here for a 5 1 lead. And Pallet just showing one or two signs of frustration at the back of the stage there. Well, I tell you what, Rob, you doubted 6 1 before the match. It's looking likely now. It's looking very likely indeed. One round of 40. I mentioned that win yesterday for Pallet. OK, it was against a player who uh, you know, has limited experience on the big stage. But One. Pallet still came up with an average of almost 100 in that uh, performance, and there was lots to like about it. I just thought he could have uh, brought more with him today so far, but may yet come good. He might have a little response somewhere, but he's running out of legs. 60. And he's running out of time as well. Do you feel that he would 17. have to win this leg? Once Bunting is within one, you fancy he's going to get match darts. It's been a decent display from Stephen Bunting. Good to see, because he's been a man that's been searching for form over the past year. 60. And it's always frustrating for us darts fans, because we've seen the quality that he can produce. Around three years ago, watching Stephen Bunting, and every time that the first start was in the treble, you just expected a maximum. One hundred and twenty. Well, that's a good recovery from uh, Palace, and that's more like it. He's perhaps wondering why he couldn't do that on a more consistent basis earlier on in this match. Bunting threatening here. 
three remaining. Yeah, not sure about that shot myself. He, want, he went for the bullseye because he prefers 32, but 42, the treble 14, is Nine around three two. times as big as that target. And his opponent is on a finish. They might take it, you know, could go tops, tops. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the danger. 17 more. Stay that's a bigger target, yeah, but that's... Well, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Bunting on 50 here. Topsy wants then two cracks at it. Back to tens. Just look at that, though, Rob. He went for the ball, a small target to leave double 16 the previous time, and then when he's got 50 left, he goes 10 for tops. Yeah. Bamboozled me. Will Paddock be the beneficiary? He will. And that's a break of throw. And as you said, the game's not over. All of a sudden, he's throwing to move within a leg. Yeah, a little wonder Bunting shaking his head there. That was there for the taking, I thought. But uh, anyway, on we go. Wow. Still has a pulse here and still in the frame. And Bunsen goes off the boil. 58. As Pallet finds himself on the march, then who knows? Lovely lie. Oh, he'd be disappointed. 98. Seems to be switching to 18s rather than 19s as well in this match, David Pallet. But when he comes back, the usual shot here is going straight for the 19s because 59. seven leaves 170. And they opt not to. One hundred and thirty. Yeah, sticking with his plan, but look, no finish when two trebles down at the bottom would have left him one. Although Bunting can't get to one, but just the kind of habits that a lot of players like to be in. Dan was saying yesterday, the likes of Michael Van Gerwen will do that automatically, whatever their opponents yeah. are, and invariably go for the bullseye and take out the 170 anyway. 93. Bunting is a player that can get easily flustered as well if things start to unravel. 59. David requires 76. And he's still not down to a finish. So six starts from here. Might only need two. And he does only need two. David Paddock. That's David game on now. The throat first. Game on. Bunting led 4-1. Was looking like he was going to move ahead. Had the dart to move 5-1 ahead. But David Paddock has fought his way back into this match. And will Bunting 100. get flustered? It's hard to forget what's gone before, isn't it? As much as you'd like to, and now One David Pallet is starting to turn the screw a little bit on Stephen Bunting. Yeah, shame about that last start, though. The crowd have just calmed down a little bit, haven't they? It's been very uh, just a loud and exciting atmosphere today. I think they hit a peak, didn't they? And it's, uh, it's understandable there should be a lull. But uh, 81. they'll find their voice again soon. I'm pretty sure of that. I well, certainly will this evening with the likes of Wade, Chisnell, Wright, Whitlock and Van Gerwen all in action. And we'll see plenty of darts like this, I'm sure. Can he follow the 180 with the 170? Well, Pallet hasn't left to finish again. Yeah, second leg in succession. Is the big one on? It is. Wow, and he, the camera zoned in, but he played it safe. Yeah, well, Pallet given the chance to do that. His reluctance to use the 19s, meaning he couldn't leave a finish. And Bullet playing sensible, but Pallet's breathing down his neck now. Would he wish he'd gone for the bullseye? Your answer is perhaps. Ooh. Oh, probably. Stepping over now. Game and stepping game over game. to good effect. With Pallet waiting Mick in the wings on double 11. Yeah, decision vindicated in the end. Just about got away with that. 
probably is the right shot, Mate. isn't it? But you've got to hold your nerve then when your opponent's waiting on a double after. Absolutely. I don't know how much of it's just down to how you feel at the time, how important the leg is. I mean, if that had been a, a, a leg to win the match, maybe it would have gone for it, just wants to get it done. Yeah, it just depends what the state of play is at, at that particular moment in time. Maybe even, you know, sometimes just wow, to get the crowd Fonzie. on your side. There are players that always go for it. There are some players who sometimes like to uh, decline shots at the bullseye even when their opponents are on finishes. Phil Taylor, the master of the mind game in that department. Wild man of Fonzie. Well, Pallet's way ahead in this leg. Yeah, Bunting had a shocking visit last time. Wild well, round up, 40. David requirement of 23. Yeah, breathing space here for Pallet as well. Flattering noise. Well, again there, I mean, he probably wasn't going to go for the bullseye anyway, but the usual 19. shot is to start on the 19s because single leaves the finish. However, 16, in this situation in the leg, probably the right thing to do to lay up on a, an easier double, one that he prefers. Game shot and and nine, that's an easy leg for David Pallet. Stephen Bunting on. on, he keeps him thinking. Yeah, Pallet just seems to have uh, rediscovered a bit of belief here now, although Bunting might just extinguish wow, that here. Fountain. The closest match of this afternoon's session was the one between Ian White and John Bowles with Diamond winning 6-5 with a fabulous 98 finish with Bowles waiting on top of the match. Yeah, it was a good match, that good tussle between those two, but it was White who came out on top between two of the elder statesmen of this weekend's draw. No disrespect wow, to the two. So this is a leg for Bunting and he's gone off with back-to-back -back 140s, so Pallet has got a lot of work to do if he's going to extend his stay beyond Saturday. Yeah, once again, switching to the 18s, that awkward first lie 19. for the first start. But the deficit is 110. Ninety-three. Good use of the board from Bunting, and he he's in a very strong position now to book his place in the last 16. One hundred and twenty. Well, we saw a one-two-eight checkout earlier today. On the 18s. Yeah, that was Jan Decker to seal victory against Michael Smith, but uh, Bunting's gone the other way. Yeah, again, 16. not needing to go that route because he wouldn't have been going for the bullseye anyway, as yeah. he displayed earlier on. Now, can Pallet apply some kind of pressure? No, he can't. One number. Stephen requires 68. Well, not significant pressure anyway. He's on a finish of 106, but Bunting here looking to wrap things up here and now. Topsy wants for the match. 28. The agony goes on. David well, David Pallet, this is your moment. Do or die, 106. It will be the 20s or the 18s. 20s it is. Now he leaves double 18. 17. And he can't find the target to force a last leg decided. Stephen he needs to rely on a miss Bunting. from Stephen Bunting. Well, in a first to 11 format, or a first to six format, I should say, in a best of 11 format, the fine lines like Good that are shot. really accentuated. And, and they can be brutally punished. And a lovely embrace between the two players at the end of what was a really good tussle in the end. Bunting threatening to run away with things at one stage, but Pallet just kept himself in business to take it to ten legs, but he couldn't force the decider. Bunting sealing the deal in the end and winning 6-4 to set up a third round encounter tomorrow with either Peter Wright or Christian Kist. It could have been another seeded casualty, but it's not to be. David Pallet will reflect on what might have been, but Stephen Bunting goes marching on. One more match in the afternoon session to come. Alan Morris, your defending champion here in Hildesheim, is on stage next against Richie Corner. We'll grab a quick word with Stephen Bunting to see how he can pick through the bones of that one. These are Biden Freunde, David Pallet, 
und Stephen Bunting. Applaus für David Pellets. Stephen, congratulations. Never easy to play a good friend, huh? It's more nervous to play a friend than what it is to play a foe, to be honest. And uh, actually, why? Because we get on so well together, uh, we travel together, <laughs> we'll have a drink in the back room together, and it really is difficult. Um, we've both got a lot of respect for each other. And um, is it difficult to be aggressive in such a match? It's been difficult to be aggressive for the last six months, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, it feels a bit weird standing here having won, but. I'm, I'm slowly but surely coming back to my best. Um, Where are you right now? 80%, 90%, probably 75 to be honest. Um, nerves have been a real factor for me over the last few months, as many people know, and it's difficult to come on a stage when you don't feel good. Um, you feel like you're coming up to lose rather than coming up to win, but I'm starting to, to, to switch that round now. I'm starting to feel good and I'm enjoying it again. So it's time to get self-confidence back You can do that on that stage. See you tomorrow again. <laughs> Stephen Bunting. Er sagt ja, das stimmt, das ist schwierig.